I'm going to do a quick review for a game called Stormcasters Ultra. I believe this game came out actually well over a year ago as Stormcasters, but then has been, um, they renamed it Stormcasters Ultra and did kind of a new release. You can see here, initially you get to choose between a male or female character. Attack and Portal are two of the things that you can level up. Uh, they also have battle cards, and you'll get to have three of these for any dungeon that you go into. They're randomly selected from the current cards that you own. You'll see that in just a minute. So here are some, some examples of some of the cards and you can upgrade them over time. Let's go ahead and do a quest real quick. So There are the three that were randomly selected here. If you want to spend a little money you can add a slot and have a fourth one show up. You can lock any of them and then shuffle for a very low gold cost, kind of in-game currency. Uh, we're just going to stick with the ones we've got and load up and show the first level. This won't actually be the first level, it'll just be a random level. So this is generally broken up into chapters where there's four zones in each chapter. We're going to go here into zone 7. Each one of these zones has uh, four levels and then three or four floors on each level. You can see you just kind of walk around trying to kite the best you can while continuously attacking. You get different weapons that you can pick up as you go and fill up, kind of fill hearts, uh, some kind of protective measure as well. And they have something like bombs that kind of fill that space there. There's a couple different types of bomb bombs. This one's a shrunken head bomb. Uh, but basically you're just going through trying to avoid taking any damage and trying to find your way towards the doors. So now I'm in the second room for this floor. So I mentioned you're going to go up three floors in this zone and fight your way through. I was experiencing some lag. You see I lost a heart there. Just trying to kind of battle through here. I don't usually have any lag in this game. I think it was just because I was uh, recording that that happened. So I'll go through here. I used a bomb. Uh, I took out some of the kind of trash mob that was around and I'm fighting this boss. So I mentioned you go through three floors and at the end of each floor you're going to fight a boss. Kind of a, a mini boss and that was the one that I just battled right there. And then when that floor is completed you get some some bonus. A lot of times extra time has been added. That's your total time to get through that dungeon or zone. And then you continue. But there are a couple things that I like about this game. One of the biggest pros is that you don't need to be connected to the internet to play. So if you're going on a long car trip or something like that, then this is a great game to bring along for that. It's one of the biggest pros for the game generally. Another one that's really nice is that they didn't build in any, uh, any aspect that would delay your progress. So a lot of games that follow this kind of format, they will have either energy that is required to do levels or something like that. Whether for better or worse for the game, um, in terms of developers, it makes it nice as a player to not have anything that slows you down. So there's nothing that prevents you from just playing this game all the way through and then playing it over again at higher difficulty levels. There's nothing that's going to slow you down in that process. You can, If you die, you just start again. Uh, at the same level that you left off on. Here it would be you know, the same zone. If you die within you know, one of these floors, you don't come back to that same floor. You come back to the start of the zone. But either way, there's nothing that would stop your process uh, like energy or anything that they've implemented. Here you'll see that we no longer have a timer. The last uh, room on the top floor for any zone or any kind of dungeon as a, as a whole the timer goes away because you're going to defeat the boss for that entire zone. And so now now there's no time limit. I'm not a huge fan of the time limit that they put in this game generally. I don't think it really adds to the game. I think there are some other ways they could have, could have handled that. Uh, but generally it's still a really fun game and you can add to the time, you know, as you level up your character, add to the amount of time you have to do a dungeon so that even if you have trouble defeating it in a certain amount of time at first, uh, as you level up your character, you won't have any trouble. So there's a lot of kind of 
kiting character or kiting bosses. Here it was just kind of making sure you stayed out of that area effect damage, and that kind of spreading damage that was going around. A lot of other ones kind of chase you and try to hit, and you've got to kite while you try to escape from other ones. So it's a lot of fun, and like I said, a, a big bonus because you don't have to be connected to the internet. So it's good, good to play on your own. If you've got kids or something, this is a nice one that they can do when they're away from, from internet. And really easy to start playing, you know, and there's a good amount of challenge as you get going. Not a ton of strategy to it, more just continuing to play and, and level up your attributes. So I probably won't put anything else out on this unless someone has a lot of interest or difficulty on some level. Just wanted to bring this forth for anyone that's interested in kind of having a companion game, especially for long trips or something. Let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything you'd like to see. Thanks again for watching.